guys, happy August. Summer. I don't know where I'm going with that, but it included fun arms. Um, yeah, I totally didn't do a favorites video last month. Been a while since I skipped one of those, but it just, with all the traveling and stuff that's going on, it just kind of got away from me. So I apologize for that, but hopefully I'm back now to regular favorites videos. It's one of my favorite, <laughs> no pun intended, videos to film and to watch from other people. Uh, so my favorites encompass a variety of topics in the lifestyle kind of genre. So we're gonna go over some clothes and accessories, beauty, home goods, multimedia, a tasty treat I'm really loving, and then the very end I'll talk about a couple of mama picks that um, that I'm, I'm especially enjoying lately for my 18 month old. Yeah, let's let that settle in for a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, so clothes and accessories. With summer, there's been a lot of swimming time, especially with a little one who loves the water. I've been taking my daughter Charlotte to weekly swim classes for over a year now. So I started when she was six months old. That's the very earliest you could start. And it's like a mommy and me kind of, well, it's, it's not just mommies, but it's a parent and me kind of swim class and swim class these kind of lightly. It's more just kind of splashing around the water, singing songs, just getting them used to and comfortable with being in the water at this early age. And I'm really glad that I've done that and I've stuck with it. It's something that I think has um, definitely contributed to her enjoyment of being in the water. Um, but it's good when you're doing that swimming in a class setting or even in a social setting with a toddler to have a supportive bathing suit. Am I right? I mean, you're lifting your child in all the water a lot, you're kind of rolling around, rolling, whirling around and you know, playing and splashing. There's just a lot of movement. I personally don't feel like wearing a bikini when I'm doing that in the pool with my child because it just doesn't feel secure. So I found this actually last year I've had this for a year now, and wait, I wrote down exactly what it is. It's the TYR Solids Halter Twist Tankini Top. Now, I just wear this with a pair of black bottoms that are not TYR. I don't even know if that's how you say that brand. Um, this brand, T TYR, um, that I like better. Uh, but I just, it's so supportive. It covers my whole midriff, which is important to me. Um, and it also has a little bit of room to spare. So when I was still a little bit budgier last summer, you know, six months postpartum, I was still carrying a little, little of the baby weight there. Um, this really covered that and I felt very good in it and it's fit very well as I've, you know, gone, gone through the different sizes. Um, and it continues to fit well. It is a little bit low cut, so it can be a little bit booby. I don't mind that because it's so supportive. This twist back is everything. Um, and I just thought I'd mention it. Nobody talks about supportive swimwear, I feel like, on YouTube. They're all the time with their cute little stream bikinis. And I'm like, girl, I ain't wearing that right now. Like, there was a time and a place for that, and this isn't it for me. Um, not that I don't think any mama shouldn't. Like, do what you want to do to feel comfortable. That's not what makes me feel comfortable, and this does. For reference, this is a size eight. I don't know if they go smaller. They must go smaller than that. Um, but it fits me perfectly in this area. And it has through when I was breastfeeding and then not. Um, so take that into account. But love this. I wear it every time I take Charlotte anywhere that's swimming related, whether it's to class or just to the public pool for, for fun. Um, it's been great. And then this is a favorite I know I've talked about before, but I would be remiss if I did not mention my beloved Birkenstock sandals. These are my like best friends during the summer. First of all, I don't have the nicest feet in terms of how nice they are to me. I have problematic feet, um, mainly stemming from hereditary bunions, which are no fun, but uh, not much you can do about that. Look who decided to join us. <laughs> we interrupt this programming for Winnie, who heard me film. I told her I was filming. I talk to her like she's a person, but I swear she understands a lot of what I say. It's mostly the inflection. I told her I was going to film and uh, came upstairs. She didn't follow, so I was like, oh, she's fine. Where She was just snoozing on the couch, which is her favorite thing to do during the day. 
And she, um, like 10 minutes into my <laughs> video chat, she comes running up. I guess she heard my voice. Uh, she wanted to be in the video. Mm -hmm. Really, she just wanted to sit on the bed, but we'll leave that where it is. Anyway, I love these. And yes, I have two pairs that look very similar, but I wear them for different purposes. These are my kind of throw on, run errands, walk the dog, like just bumming around, tried and true. These are the Arizona model. Um, and both I have are in the, now I wrote this down too, the um, tobacco oiled leather, which is my favorite. I've had these for a few years now. You can see they're pretty well um, worn in the middle, but my feet love these. To me, they're almost as supportive as wearing sneakers. Of course, nothing is gonna be quite as supportive as wearing your sneakers with custom orthotics in it. I, I stand by that investment. If you have um, bunions, like go to the doctor, get yourself custom orthotics. It makes a world of difference. But these are great because they start with a really high um, arch. I already have a high arch, but then they come down, um, they wear, they mold to your foot really nicely, almost like a custom orthotic would. Um, now I'm not saying these would replace that, but they're a really nice summer alternative. And then these, the Granadas, are my dressy ones. <laughs> now I don't wear them like to go out nice or anything, but to me they're a little bit more put together with this kind of cutout design, and they just look a little cuter, so if I'm wearing a dress or something cuter that day, and I just wanna feel a little cuter, I'll wear those. Um, and those are my clothes and accessory favorites for the, I mean, I've literally been living in those this summer and last summer too. Um, for beauty, I thought since we're talking about summery things, I might as well stay on that bandwagon and talk about sunscreen. Somebody just asked me recently what my favorite current sunscreens are, and these have been them for the past couple of years now. Um, this one, which you probably can't really see because it's really... The label's really worn off. I just ordered a new bottle of this because it's pretty much gone. Is the Kula, is the brand, Mineral Sunscreen in Matte Finish for Face. It's SPF 30. It's a mineral sunscreen. It just has the nicest finish. It truly is a matte finish. It almost feels primary without feeling slippery or slick. And it just, nothing feels like it on your face. It just really feels natural, not slimy not unappealing at all, and it works. It works. Um, and then for body, I've been using the Think Sport SPF 50 Plus sunscreen. Again, this is another mineral sunscreen. Um, zinc oxide is the main mineral um, barrier that they use, and it is very effective. It is one of those that goes on a bit thick and is a little bit white, but if you really work it in, the white will disappear. You won't end up looking like a ghost. You just have to really rub it into your skin. It is waterproof. It actually works. Of course, with any sunscreen, you're supposed to reply, reapply, I think every hour and a half, is it? Every 80 minutes or 90 minutes or something like that. But it's, it's very effective even in the water um, and I love it. So those are definitely beauty favorites because sunscreen is super important. I wear SPF every day. Um, I have it built into my Juice Beauty moisturizers that I use on my face. Um, so I'd only use this on my face when I don't have makeup on, which isn't very often um, these days when I don't have my, my um, tinted moisturizers on. But I use this on my neck and on this area, the decolletage, and my chops my shoulders every day because I tend to get the most sun there naturally. And I do tan easily, naturally, even with sunscreen on. It's not intentional. I don't like sit out in the sun. I just get color, even with SPF 50 on. Um, and then home goods. I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about something a little bit different. I do consider this a home good. I love having fresh flowers in my home, but it's an expensive thing to get in the habit of doing all the time. Uh, but if you are a Trader Joe's fan, you will know that they have the best flower selection at awesome prices. So I believe this was probably a $5.99 bouquet, so like $6, but look at the quality of flowers in this. You get the, the lilies and it's beautiful rose and all of the gorgeous, um, I don't know what these are, like little mums and things, and a, and a Gerber daisy, a couple of Gerber daisies. It's a beautiful bouquet. This bouquet at some place like Whole Foods would run you, I don't know, like 15 bucks or more. Um, 
for the same flowers and I find the quality is amazing. They last at least a week every time I purchase them. Um, I always make sure to buy ones where the, if I'm getting any with lilies or roses, where the blooms are pretty um, closed and the roses, you just wanna make sure they're a little bit firmer at the base of the flower, but um, they will last great. They're, it's my go-to place for flowers, especially wanting to have flowers on a regular basis. It's just six bucks a week, I can do that. Like, you know, that makes sense. That doesn't feel like too, um, extravagant um, but it is extravagant to have flesh flowers and I keep them in my kitchen because that's where I spend most of my time and it just brings a smile to my face and just brightens up our home um, I love having plants you guys know I have a lot of plants in my home um, but I have, there's nothing like having fresh flowers too um, I think that's a really nice really nice touch okay let's move on to multimedia favorites first of all don't die of shock but I'm actually reading a book like not an audible book, like an actual paper book um, that I'm reading. It has been so long since I have really made time for reading. I love to read and I have always been a very avid reader, but since becoming a mom, it's just something that I've, I've kind of put aside as a priority and I really am making a conscious effort to bring it back in. Um, in my downtime, when I have my downtime at the end of the day, um, I will spend that watching something most of the time, either with Dawn or on my iPad, I'm watching some YouTube videos, and I just want to watch less and read more. I'm not, I, don't, I mean, there's not a lot of time to watch a ton every day, but I feel like I miss the act of reading and my brain misses it. Um, and anyway. So I'm trying to get back in reading and I thought it would be great to start with something really easy and quick. This is Harry Potter and the Cursed Child parts one and two and it's a, um, it's a screenplay basically um, that's based on a, an original new story by J.K. Rowling with the help of authors John Tiffany and Jack Thorne. So basically it's an extension of the Harry Potter story. It's I think I don't know, I can't remember, is it 20 years down the line? That seems like too many. Yeah, I guess it is 20 years, 20 years later. Um, and Harry Potter has children and it's, the story is about, mainly about one of his sons and his experience at Hogwarts and all the things that he has to go through and living in the shadow of his father's, um, you know, f fame basically. Uh, so it's very interesting. I think if you're a die-hard Harry Potter fan, you would find a lot of fault in this. You would be a little bit disappointed in some of the lack of detail and some of the discrepancies um, and some of the liberties taken. But I think keeping in mind that it's meant to be a theater production, a play, and um, that it's not primarily, it's not solely written by J.K. Rowling. I think if you take that with a grain of salt, it's a really fun way to relive the Harry Potter awesomeness in a new story, um, which I think is fun. And I love returning to the Wizarding World and having having that sort of having that sort of experience. And it's a really super fast read. I mean, I've only read, been reading this for a few days, and I'm already more than halfway through it. Um, and I only read for maybe like. Um, 20 or 30 minutes um, a night that I, you know, that I have the time for. So I really enjoy it. I think it's just kind of fun. I think if you take it with a grain of salt, or a big grain of salt, some, some might say, that it's a fun extension of the Harry Potter story. Um, I'm not going to get into in the nitty gritty of it and like the details of why, how it could be better and blah, blah, blah. I just, I just, just take my word for it. Um, well, don't take my word for it, read it yourself. <laughs> I think if you really like Harry Potter stuff, you'll enjoy having the opportunity to extend the story in your imagination, even if you're not thrilled with the actual um, book itself. And then, oh, this is so exciting. My, um, so many of you know that I have had a really good working relationship with the PR team at Aaron Condren, um, which is a planner company for years now, it's you know like four or five years going on. Um, and they've just always been very generous and kind with me and sharing new products and, um, and product releases and things like that. And I've just had a really good working relationship with that, with them. Well, in that time frame, of course, 
it's given me an um, opportunity to become close with um, especially one person on the team, Sam. Some of you might know who Sam is. Samantha is her full name, but she goes by Sam. Um, and I've just, she's such a fun and vibrant and really energetic personality. Um, and I've just really enjoyed getting to know her over the years. So she actually has a blog that she's been keeping under wraps for a couple of months, but she's ready to share it a bit more publicly. And I wanted to share because it has quickly become one of my favorite new blogs. It's a travel blog and it's uh, called My Traveling Circus. And traveling is spelled with two L's, um, which is the British way of spelling traveling. And she is British, so that makes sense. Um, but she talks all about traveling with her kids all over the world. They have gone on amazing trips and she shares their personal photos and anecdotes and it's just great. And if you know Sam personally, when you're reading the blog, it's like you can hear her telling these stories. It sounds just like her um, and she, it's just great. So I wanted to share that with you guys. If you're interested in travel blogs, especially that focus on fa uh, family travel to far off places, I definitely would check it out. So I will link I will link the blog for you below and please send her some love and support. She's a little bit nervous about sharing publicly with everybody, but um, I think it's a wonderful thing to share those sorts of stories with the world um, and, and a brave thing to do. And um, I applaud her for it and I will definitely be following along because it's, it's Sam to a T um, and she's great. <laughs> so check her out and send her some love. And my last multimedia favorite, I have become bona fide, bona fide, obsessed with a YouTube channel run by Christopher Allen. Some of you may or may not know him. Actually, I found him through suggestions of yours. A few of you recommended his videos for it to me, especially when I was just getting into bullet journaling, which I feel like I'm still just getting into, but more on that another time. Um, and I quickly became hooked. So hooked, in fact, that I think I've watched the majority of his videos. Um, I know that sounds crazy, but you can find little snippets of time to watch things. <laughs> I've been watching him for a couple of months now and he has a relatively new channel. I think it only started late last year, so he doesn't have a ton of content yet, so it is totally doable to get through them. Um, but I have just become so enamored with his channel. His vibe is all about kindness and sharing genuinely and, and sharing joy and he's just a great person and I can't keep this secret to myself. I mean, it's not a secret. His channel is fastly growing as it rightly should and anybody who shares with that sort of genuine exuberance will grow. That is my belief. But I, I just had to share with you guys because I, I just really enjoy enjoy his videos. I feel like I'm there with him when he's chatting. I feel like I'm talking to a friend, even though I'm not talking. You know what I mean? It's that kind of vibe. Um, it feels really personal and it feels really positive. And I just think that's such a glimmer of hope and sunshine in this dark, dark world to, ha to find um, people who share like that. Um, it kind of, it just, it makes you feel good about people in a time when it, it can be hard to feel good about humanity sometimes. Do you know what I mean? So if you want a little sunlight, a little spark of joy, please head over, send him love, give him support. Um, he works full time and he's putting up a ton of videos. He's doing great work and he is a joy. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy watching him too. He talks mostly about I mean, he does vlog a little, and I know a lot of you guys are into that. Um, and he talks about healthy living and, you know, some skincare things. He does talk about some luxury, like items, like bags and things. Um, he does travel vlogs. He does planning videos. Um, he shows his home and how he styles it. He's got amazing taste. Um, so check him out. I will link his um, channel below for sure and give him a warm, warm internet hug because he definitely deserves it. Um, okay, moving right along, we're going to Tasty Treats. Of course, you guys know, like I say this every time, I could talk about something healthy, I could tell you, you know, the hummus I'm really enjoying right now or what yogurt's really cool, whatever. I'm gonna keep it real, I'm gonna talk about a treat, okay? Because it's Tasty Treats. 
Sugarfina is something I discovered, I think it was last year, and I, I featured it in my holiday gift guide last year because it is exquisite candy for grown-ups. It is amazingly delicious. It is expensive candy, um, but it is candy from all over the world that is sourced and, and brought into this brand who then redistributes it, and it is just the best the best thing and these baby champagne bears are probably the best thing that's ever happened to me in the candy world i'm just gonna say it i'm i'm just gonna say it this is probably my all-time favorite candy and i would have if had you asked me before finding these i would have laughed at you and said a gummy bear absolutely not it obviously would be something chocolate because i'm like the biggest chocoholic on the planet but these blow chocolate out of the water. And that is saying something, my friends. Um, so I was recently, not recently, like well, it was kind of recently. We were recently in, um, in Southampton, Long Island for a family reunion and they had a, a Sugarfina boutique there this summer, which they hadn't had previous years. We go every summer for a family reunion. And so I went in because I knew I, I love the candy. I've tried a few things before. Um, and I wanted to try these baby champagne bears. I think I've had the rosé ones, which were good. They just weren't like something I was like absolutely head over heels for. I can't remember. I feel like I would know if I had tried these before. Well, I knew I had to get a big box of these because they are so good. This is not inexpensive gummy bears, you guys. This is tw like, I think this is $20. It's expensive, but I've had this for, I don't know, over a month. Does that make sense? Yeah, about a month, and I'm only halfway through it. The thing about, they make them in a regular gummy bear size too, but the thing about the mini ones is that they're so small, but they pack that punch of flavor. Um, so you only need a few of them to feel like a treat. So they last a long time. At least they have been for me. To me, this is lasting a long time in the candy world. Uh, but they are so good. I think they're actually made with Dom Perignon. Um, because, because it's gummy bears and gelatin, or I don't really know exactly how you make a gummy bear, but it's cooked off. So it doesn't actually have any alcohol in it. It just has the essence, like the flavor. And they don't taste like bitter or anything kind of whiny like that wine ish i mean but they just i can't even explain them they're so good please try them if you have a sugarfina boutique near you i don't think there are many you should run out and try them or you can order online but oh so good i had i had to share share the joy of that amazing candy okay and last but not least i'm going to talk about a few mama favorites so again, keeping in with this summery theme, I thought I'd talk about um, some of my summer must-haves for Charlotte this year. And these swimsuits have been my number one. Um, it is by, now hold on, I have to write this down. Oh wait, no, it's still here. Hatley is the brand and it's the Rash Guard. Um, this was actually a birthday gift from Charlotte's grandma, from Suzanne, if you guys are familiar. Um, you know, last winter or this winter, uh, for our upcoming Disney World trip that we went on in February um, that I shared about here, actually. I did post a vlog. Um, and this is an 18 to 24 month size, which is what she was in at the beginning of the year. Now she's busting out of her two tees. She almost needs a three tees, but she's still wearing this 18 to 24 month bathing suit and it's still got room in it. So it's a it's really good fit. Um, what I love about this, it's got the rash guard top and it's that SPF 50, I'm pretty sure it's that SPF 50 fabric. I don't know exactly, but I will link the product below and you guys can check it out. But I like that it has the long sleeves. It has the zipper back, which makes it really easy to get on and off over the head. My favorite part, however, has been that it has a snap bottom. My daughter is still in diapers. She wears a swim diaper to go swimming in. This just makes it so much easier to get off her so that I can take it, unsnap it, and lift it over head like a shirt. Um, so I actually, so Suzanne gave us that for her birthday and then I actually bought another one because we do swim quite a bit uh, between swim class and, and going to the public pool in this um, cute butterfly pattern. Um, so those have been really great and I think she's definitely gonna last in them through the summer because um, there's still plenty of room. Of course, you guys know hats are important for little ones um, during the sunny sun summer months. Um, and it has been really hard, 
Like, I think I've gone through four or five hats and it's either the brims are too long or the back is too, or she just, she just hates it and she don't want to wear it. This is the one hat I found that she actually wears. It has a shorter brim, but it still provides plenty of coverage for the face. It is an eyelet design, which I think is really cute. Um, I really like that it has the, um, what do we call this, cinch um, feature at the brim so you can make it more snug to their head so it just doesn't fly off. Uh, and it also has a neck strap, which comes unclipped if you don't want it on at all. Um, I keep it just pretty loose. I think it just kind of helps to keep there. She doesn't like anything like close up to her, her uh, neck or chin. But this has great, she wears it in the pool, it gets wet, it dries super fast. I throw it in the laundry machine and it washes up great. I do air dry it, but because of the material, it air dries fast. It is by Twinkle Bell and it is their sun hat. And it comes in different sizes. This is actually a six month to three year size. Um, so that, that seems like a pretty, pretty good range there. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to also talk about the sunscreen that I prefer for Charlotte, which is also by the same brand of my favorite body sunscreen. And this is the Think Baby, um, and it's the SPF 50 plus um, mineral sunscreen made with babies in mind. And again, it's a, it's a very similar um, consistency to this where it's thicker. Um, and it, it you know comes out white, but if you rub it in, it doesn't take a lot of rubbing, but if you rub it in, it really works, and a little of this goes a long way, and it lasts, and it's waterproof. My child has not been burned once, knock on wood. Um, I'm very diligent about protecting her skin, but she, you know, I mean, she gets wet, we go to the pool, like, we're outside a lot during the day, and this stuff works great. Um, and I don't worry when I have her in it. So, oh, you guys, that was a lot of things. I felt like I had so much to share because I wanted to kind of make up for skipping last week, <laughs> not last week, last month. I do apologize about that, but um, it's good to be back. It's good to be back with a favorite. So I'd love to know what some of your picks have been from the past month, especially if you have any summertime favorites, if you want to share, I think that's fun. Uh, keeping it seasonal and uh, Yeah, I'll see you guys real soon. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye